What's up YouTube? I'm John Wheels and today I'm going to be showing you all about my 3M Speedglass PAPR or PAPR unit um, and how I adapted a DeWalt battery to work with it, the case I 3D printed, and why I like it. Alright, so this is my 3M Speedglass 9100FX Papper unit system. That's a mouthful, huh? Anyway, so I got it used on eBay for 500 bucks. So normally these units, brand new, cost around like 2000 2500 something like that. So first let's start off with the helmet. FX is awesome. You still maintain your respiratory protection. You have this clear grinding shield fitting, whatever you want to do. And then when it's time to weld, you do that, it's auto darkening. Now, inside of there, it's hard to see, but it's easy to whenever you're actually the one operating. You have um, delay sensitivity. And my favorite part is you can actually adjust your shade from five to 13. So you have your torch cutting, plasma cutting, and then you could do low amp welding all the way up to some huge stuff with 13 uh, shade. Anyway, I added this little light right here. Just is handy for getting into tight spots. Um, recommend that really for any welding helmet. Uh, came with this uh, protective, you know, neck, head, spark thing. You probably don't have to wear a ca welding cap if you don't want. I just do. Um, but yes. That's the helmet. Um, next would be the hose that connects the blower to your helmet. And so uh, this one came with the FR um, protective sleeve. This is a real soft, uh, flexible rubber underneath. It, it's like a vacuum hose almost, um, except it's blowing. And then uh, this will just keep the sparks from melting holes in it, which I definitely recommend one of these if you don't have it. Uh, you could probably even just cut up a pair of jeans or something like that um, so next was the uh, actual unit so mine is pretty thick right now and I'll get to that later so first what it did come with was um, this guy here so you're gonna have your particle filter um, I'll give you a part number Then you'll have a pre-filter right here. Um, these I'd recommend almost like every other time you use it or something, just take the compressor and just blow these out. That helps get a ton of stuff out. And then you have your spark arrestor screen. So this is all it had on it at first, it was just those things right there. And I thought, oh, I have a papper, I'm protected from welding fumes, right? No, just particles. And so I actually got metal fume fever or galvanized poisoning because I thought I was protected, but I wasn't. So for not about a hun another hundred bucks, actually right at that, um, I got the organic vapor acid gas filter. And so this just stacks in, I'll give you a part number. Pause the video if you need to. So this will stack in here. I remember which side it goes on. And then you can put the filter in there. This guy. And it all just snaps together. So this you wear, it's a leather belt. And the $500 also included some more pre-filters, another particle filter, and some uh, clear lenses, which are all very useful. Um, so now I'll get to the part that I took inspiration from. And anyway, I kind of used this idea, but I finished. He did not make a uh, case for the bottom to protect the board, and I did. And so I will link that in the description to GrabCAD. I think it's a free, maybe it costs a little bit. I know it's free for me. 
um, cause I'm a student, but anyway, it's like CAD software or, um, for 3d printing, you can get all different types of models off of it. And, um, anyway, I won't make any money, but I'll link this guy. Um, if you want to print one for yourself, but anyway, the batteries are like $600 and another hundred for the charger. So just outrageous. But what you probably all have lying around are some of your cordless tool batteries. So I happen to be a DeWalt guy. Uh, this will work for Milwaukee or Ryobi or any brand you use, Makita, doesn't matter. So you can go onto eBay or Amazon and search up just a generic power bank. It just gets you two wires coming out and you can use that uh, 20 volts for whatever you want. The problem is this guy doesn't run at 20 volts. Um, some of them run at like 12 point something volts. This one runs at 14.4. You'll just have to check on your unit. Um, but anyway, this just clicks in and now I can turn it on just like that. So it, it goes low for a second and then it'll crank back up. Not sure why, but I think that's just how it goes. So now you heard it power up to high. And so it's got a little hum, but it's worth it if you don't want to get cancer. So. so this is that case I made. Basically, you just push in this little lever and it rocks out and comes out. Uh, and this is where the regular battery would come in. All right, so here's a look at the board. So you can see my battery here for a two thirds charge. And so my first board is my low voltage cutoff board. So this is telling me my input voltage right now. If I click that button, that's my threshold voltage. So once it gets down to that, it'll shut off. And then um, this over here, that 1.5, um, I think that's something to do with like oscillations. Uh, if it sees greater spikes than that, it'll shut off or something. Um, anyway, those are my settings for the DeWalt battery. So here I have my input. It's coming in to this low voltage cutoff board. It's going out. It's still going to be at 20 volts, but really it's 18.3 as the battery slowly gets down, right? And now I have my uh, voltage step down board. So it takes my 20 volts, we'll call it, and it will turn it down to the 14.4 that's needed for uh, this PAPR unit. And so uh, by turning this little tiny screw right there, um, that's how you adjust it. And so anyway, uh, then that goes down to these terminals. And so I had a really tough time finding uh, which one was which. So your positive is going to be that middle terminal negative is going to be the one on the right and so um, I just soldered them directly to terminals because I knew I wasn't buying that $600 um, battery and then I can take my case that I made just kind of pop it in it's hard to do one hand and then that just snaps right in there and it looks pretty factory um, and so that will uh, just shut off when you're done one thing to note is that when you set your voltage here, first you want the motor on and running um, because you can get the ballpark when it's off uh, and then fine tune it once it's running because it'll be slightly different. And then you also want to make sure the system is fully plugged in. So you're going to have your hose running up to your helmet um, because that adds extra resistance to the motor because uh, it's trying to push the air through a small space that will change your voltage here. So you want to set it how you would be wearing it. All right, and so obviously this battery is only going to last um, a couple hours compared to the 12 hour battery life of these. But for 600 bucks, I think you could buy enough to make up for this. And you can recharge these and you can probably just real quick go swap out a battery, throw this guy on the charger and only really have two batteries. So I mean, in my experience, it lasts about three hours with one of these tiny guys. So if you put a big, you know, six amp hour battery on there, uh, that'll be plenty of time. All right, so you're just going to wear your normal PBE. You, I think a welding cap's optional, but I like to wear one. Uh, so, yeah, you basically just put it on like a belt. And then you're going to grab 
one end of your the female or the male end of your um, hose. You're just gonna feel it twist in there. You're gonna take your battery, click that in. I made it so you know it's all accessible right here. You can reach around the back, hold the button. All right. Now your hood. It's gonna go on. Then you're gonna pull this chin strap down, so it's making a nice seal. Kind of take this. All right, and so obviously that's not gonna fit in every situation if you're up underneath something or whatever, but you still wanna be protected. Um, these uh, 3M little half face respirators, make sure you get the quick latch, are great. I can go from talking to someone, oh, let me go do a weld real quick, get underneath. One hand. One hand, just to do that. And then safety glasses for it, they, they kind of fit weird on your nose, so. What I did is I actually trimmed um, with a Dremel tool around so that they fit perfectly whenever I put my respirator on. All right, and so another thing to note on this, I have it written down here so I don't miss it, uh, is you gotta turn on the lens. That's one downside. It's not just always on. So you see that shade on button, uh, you gotta press that and it'll stay on as long as you're using it and probably like another half hour past that, but uh, you just don't wanna pick it up after a day or so and then not have it be on and flash yourself. So you might ask yourself, why would I spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a papper unit when a respirator is like 30 bucks? Well, uh, if you've ever worked in the heat of the summer, um, you will know how uncomfortable one of those tight uh, masks are and it's just impossible to breathe. It's better than those like disposable dust masks by far, but it still, it gets really hot and sweaty. Um, with the papper, you have fresh, clean air blowing over your face. So it's almost like you have a fan on your face while you're getting clean air. So um it's just tremendously more comfortable you just have a soft um cotton uh canvas whatever thing around your neck and uh instead of something tied up against your face and pulling on your head and everything and um yeah it's just so much more comfortable even if you didn't care about uh having a respirator at all or you've never considered one in the past this would be a great option because it's honestly more comfortable than just wearing a regular mask and nothing underneath it, in my opinion. Thanks for watching. I'll try to leave all the links I can think of in the description. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment below.